Mtula Kilonzo Junior. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, when, when we left chamber, we drove to Senator Malala's residence. We found him there. There were four Subaru, Subaru vehicles and numerous armed policemen, some in a VX. Mr. Speaker, we proceeded to inquire by virtue of our training and by virtue of the law, the reasons for the arrest of Senator Malala. There was no warrant of arrest. The officers said, call the DCI. We have just been given instructions. Mr. Speaker, on further inquiry as to the circumstances that would lead to the suspicion, the arrest of Senator Malala, would you believe it, Speaker? The person in charge told us that Senator Malala is accused of having distributed Government of Kenya sanitizers in Mumias yesterday. And Speaker, I want to look into your eye because I'm addressing you. He was distributing sanitizers in Western province. Yesterday, in Mumias in particular, yesterday, Senator Kasanga was in the, in the press. Our own Senator talking about COVID millionaires, people who have stolen masks, sanitizers to go and sell. Senator Malala was distributing sanitizers to widows. They misled us, Mr. Speaker, and this, this is very challenging because as lawyers, myself, including uh, uh, Senator Omogeni, should not have let Senator Malala off. But we were told there's mischief in, in this chamber. So against our oath as lawyers, Mr. Speaker, we have come to address you. Against our oath, we have, left, we have let Senator Malala, who was supposed to go to Nairobi, uh, province, Nairobi area, is now on his way to Mumias. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is you, and I'm looking at you, it is you, Mr. Speaker, who has been defied. And Mr. Speaker, if you cannot sit on that seat, this will be a good time to resign, I can sit there. Because this is a chamber of parliament. It is to an extent, Mr. Speaker, you have such powers that if there was a vacancy in the executive, Mr. Speaker, you could, you could be a president. And for even a rumor, Mr. Speaker, that you are under pressure. I hear you are under pressure. Pressure from who? Did God call you? Did you speak to God this afternoon, Mr. Speaker? It's who good, is pressurizing it, it, it's you? It's good you said it's a rumor. Yes. Because I'm... Um, <laughs> I'm not under any pressure. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if you are not under any pressure and nobody has called you, Mr. Speaker, this session must end. Now. Because if you gazetted a special sitting, Mr. Speaker, and somebody distributed sanitizers, and that is a misdemeanor, it's a misdemeanor to the extent, Mr. Speaker, we would have paid for a bond, would have finished this business, and Senator Malala would have been charged even if they wanted to take him to Somalia or Kakuma. Mr. Speaker, there has never been a day since your election that you are under trial. It's not us. We have done our bit. If you can issue a directive seated in your, cha in your chair, and Mr. Speaker, somebody says he's on leave. Imagine what would happen, Mr. Speaker, if the car that is driving Senator Malala at high speed rolls somewhere in Naivasha, God forbid, would, would the cabinet secretary be on leave also? The contempt that they are treating us, the contempt they treat people who are elected, Mr. Speaker, tells you, Mr. Speaker, that this country is on the brink. But let me just finish. Because in my anger, I might say something that might lead to things I don't want to say. This is what the 32nd president said. And I'm talking to the powers. Because other than taking my life, you have nothing, no control over me. He said this in 1941. We too, born to freedom 
and believing in freedom are willing to fight and maintain freedom. We and all others who believe deeply as we should would rather die on our feet than live on our knees. We will not live on our knees. If Mr. Speaker, you even direct we proceed, there will be so much chaos in this floor, Mr. Speaker. There will be no action. You will have to call police to arrest all of us. Because we cannot proceed, Mr. Speaker. It is chilling to think, Mr. Speaker, that we can proceed when our senators are being taken across the country on the highway by force with people carrying guns. Mr. Speaker, if there has been a violation of parliament, Mr. Speaker. What's your point of order, Senator Kajwang? Mr. Speaker. Order, 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 Senator Murkomen. Mr. Speaker, order, Sen order, Senator Murkomen will not teach me how to prosecute my business here because I was brought here by the people of Homer Bay. Mr. Speaker, I didn't want to disrupt Senator Mutula. I feel him and I hear him. Could you, Mr. Speaker, just advise him not to threaten chaos in the House? That would be the orderly way to proceed. Senator Mutula. Senator Kajuang is my friend. Senator Kajuang is famous for blowing whistles. He's the wrong person to advise Senator Mutula. <laughs> Keep your cool, boy. The same person who blew whistles on the president is advising me about chaos. What are you talking about? Listen to wisdom and shut up and listen. This is not a laughing matter. The life of your colleagues is on the line. We could leave this chamber and allow you to pass whatever you want to pass. We walked out of this chamber. The election laws were passed. They were nullified by the court. What the hell do you think you guys are doing to us? It's not going to happen. We must speak as a Senate. And that means, Mr. Speaker, that Mr. Speaker enforce your direction. It's not us. You are, you are not an inferior person to the Cabinet Secretary. What's your point of order, Senator Matangi? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, equally too, I would, I would absolutely not want to interrupt, interrupt the flow of thought and, uh, and, and the wave of raising emotion that uh, Senator Mutula Kilonzo uh, is, is, is uh, up to on this matter. Uh, all of us feel it, Mr. Speaker. My point of order, Mr. Speaker, there is only one speaker in this house, which is yourself. Order members, order members. And so, Let's Senator Wambua, make your point Senator of order. Cannot, cannot direct me. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, my point of order is very simple, yeah. Mr. Speaker. Is the Senator for Makweni in order? When we left this house, we were united, Mr. Speaker, on the course of action to take. And you give directions. Now, why, why Mr. Speaker, is the Senator for Makweni saying, what are you trying to do to us? Who? We? And, and Mr. Speaker, uh, unfortunately, Senator Kindiki spoke before I could raise a point of order. When, when Mr. Speaker... Oh, wind up your point of order. Wind up. Oh, Mr. Speaker... We, oh, order, members. Order. Mr. Speaker, Senator Matang, we did agree on how you prosecute yes, your Mr. point Speaker, of order. The question I'm asking Mr. Speaker, which I'm pointing out which is out of order, is that it is wrong for Senator for Makweni to impute improper motive by whichever way, by telling this house and the country that there are senators here who, have, uh, who, who are doing anything against them, Mr. Speaker. We are united in this matter, Mr. Speaker. Okay. And the order. threat of chaos, Mr. Speaker, oh, oh. will not sell okay. either, you Mr. Made Speaker. Your, you have made your won't. point of order. Oh, okay. Senator Mutula Kilonzo, continue. Mr. Speaker, I was finishing my remark. And uh, if, if I confuse Senator Matangi, I want to say that when I say we, I mean, I mean lots of people. I mean we. Mr. Speaker, 
a narrative has been planted in this house. The other day, Bishop Muller of AIC told me when the churches were closed, that when you close churches, the devil rules. After COVID, I think we allowed the devil to walk into this chamber. That devil is ruling this chamber. And that devil, Mr. Speaker, is the devil that says that you can pit 24 against 23 or 29. Three people, th those are not three votes. Those are three senators. Mr. Speaker, three senators. One of them, the deputy of Senator James Orengo. This matter is, even if we sound emotional, Mr. Speaker, what I've seen today in front of my eyes as we told the police, allow us to take Senator Malala to chamber and we will, we, you will hand it over to him to whatever you want. Blocked the road and guess what, Mr. Speaker? They put handcuffs, handcuffs on the gate so that we don't leave. The estate was locked using handcuffs. Mr. Speaker, how sad how sad can we get? Mr. Speaker, I support this motion. Not because of anything, but Mr. Speaker, I cannot imagine sitting in this house to debate anything. Mr. Speaker, because Senator Malala is not just a voter. Senator Lelegwe is not just a voter. Senator Bomet is not just a voter in this house. They are elected senators. And they are human beings. If the government of Kenya is not human, just two senators, Mr. Speaker, I pity your role today. Thank you, Speaker.